Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to do another example with an object like a sphere falling in a viscous liquid. Let's say that the liquid is glycerin, has a density of 12, 1,261 kilogram per cubic meter. Let's say that the sphere is made out of aluminum, and then the uh, the density would be about 2,715 kilograms per cubic meter. We already said the radius is 2 millimeters. We're trying to find the terminal velocity. And uh, I guess in order to find the terminal velocity, we'll have to know what the uh, coefficient of viscosity is. Mu is about 1.2, and that would be Pascal's time seconds for the viscosity of the liquid. So first we need to find the terminal velocity of that sphere, and then secondly, before it reaches the terminal velocity, as the sphere is moving through the fluid, it wouldn't be for a very long distance, it will be accelerating until it reaches terminal velocity. So the question then we would be for part B is, what is the acceleration of that sphere when the velocity is half the terminal velocity? All right, so let's do each part separately. First of all, we're going to try to find the terminal velocity. And we can say that the terminal velocity is equal to the difference between the density, so the density of the sphere minus the density of the liquid, divided by the coefficient of viscosity, times 2 ninths, and I keep getting ahead of myself, 2 ninths, the acceleration due to gravity, times the radius of the sphere squared. So that's how we find the terminal velocity. So let's plug in some numbers. So 2715. That would be kilograms per cubic meter, minus 1261, divided by 1.2, that's Pascal's times seconds, times 2 ninths, times 9.8, times 0 0.002 quantity squared. And so that will give us our terminal velocity. Let's find out what that is. So we take 2715 uh, minus 1261, divided by 1.2 times 2 divided by 9 times 9.8 times 0 0.002 squared equals wow it's not a very large velocity that gives us a, a terminal velocity of 0 0.0106 meters per second all right so that's pretty straightforward once you have this equation it's very easy to figure out either the terminal velocity or the viscosity depending upon what's given. But now we're trying to find the acceleration when the velocity is half the terminal velocity, half this velocity right here. Well, think back, Newton's second law that says that F equals ma, which means that the acceleration is equal to the force applied divided by the mass of the object. And so the mass is easy, that's simply, uh, let's see here, um, the mass uh, we get that from, uh, let's see, the density is equal to mass divided by the volume. So mass can be written as the density times the volume. All right, so we're gonna, now going to write this as the force applied divided by, instead of mass, we write the density of the sphere times the volume. And of course, the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. What about the force? Well, let's see here. There are several forces acting on this object. And let, Do I have a red pen here? Yep. A red pen. Okay, for one thing, we have the weight of the object, that would be mg. We have the buoyancy force, I'll write as bf, and we have the drag force due to viscosity, f sub d. Remember, f sub d is something that we get from Stokes' law. Now, do I have Stokes' law memorized? Let's see here if I can remember what the drag, the force of the drag is. So let me write over here. The force of the drag is equal to, I believe it was 6 pi times the coefficient of viscosity times the radius to the fourth power. It's something like that. I'll have to look it up because I can't remember what that was equal to. So let me take a quick you look. R, no, it's not, not R to the fourth power. That's from something else. Times the velocity. There we go. All right. I was close, but not quite. All right. So that's the drag force. The buoyancy force is going to be equal to the, the uh, weight of the displaced liquid, and of course the force of gravity is mg, so let's write all that down. So this is equal to m times g, that's the weight of the sphere, um, minus the buoyancy force, minus the drag force, all divided by 
the density times the volume of the sphere. And again, just like before, instead of writing the mass of the displaced liquid, we're going to write the rho times v of the displaced liquid. So this is going to be, let me write the acceleration, is equal to the density times the volume times g, and of course this is for the liquid, because the, the, the um, oh, no, no, not the liquid. That's the weight of the object, so I need to use the density of the object. So the density of the sphere minus the buoyancy force, which is the rho Vg of the liquid, that would be the weight of the displaced liquid, which is the rho Vg of the liquid, minus the drag force, which is Stokes' law, which is 6 pi times mu times the radius times V, all divided by the density of the sphere times the volume of the sphere. All right, now all I have to do is plug in all the numbers. Okay, acceleration is equal to uh, let's see here, so we have the density of the sphere, which is 2715 times 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. Radius cubed. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write radius cubed times g minus the density of the liquid, which is um, 1261 times 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed minus 6 pi mu r v and the whole thing divided by the density of the sphere which is 2715 times 4 thirds pi times r cubed. Now the reason why I did that, I didn't put the value for the radius yet, is because I can actually factor out the radius from the numerator and the radius from the denominator and cancel that out. So I have an r cubed, r cubed, r to the first power, r cubed, so I can factor out an r, and I have a pi, a pi and a pi in the numerator, and a pi in the denominator, so all the pi's cancel out. I'm missing a G, am I not? Yes, I need a G right there. Missing the G. And I can factor out an R, so this R disappears, this becomes R squared, this becomes R squared, and this becomes R squared. All right, now we can go ahead and put in the rest of the numbers. So acceleration is equal to 2715 times 4 thirds times the radius, which is 0 0.002 squared times G, which is 9.8, minus 1261 times 4 thirds times the radius squared 0 0.002 squared times 9.8 minus 6 times 1.2 and the velocity is going to be half the velocity I have over here which would be 0 0.0053 and the whole thing Divided by 2715, 4 thirds, and r squared, 0 0.002 quantity squared. All right, that's not so bad. Not with a calculator, just think. We used to have to do this without a calculator many years ago. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers, see what we get. 2715 times 4 divided by 3 times 0 0.002 squared times 9.8. All right, I'll write that down in case I lose my intermediate value. So 0 0.1419. Okay, I subtract from that minus 1261 times 4 divided by 3 times 0 0.002 squared times 9.8. Close parentheses, so this would be 0 0.0659. I push the equal sign, so I subtract that from the previous value. And now I go minus, open parentheses, 6 times 1.2 times 0 0.0053, close parentheses. I get 0 0.0059. 
0.03816, and I press the equal sign, so subtract it from that, so now I have the numerator, and I divide the whole thing by 2715, divided by 4 times 3, and divided by 0 0.002 squared equals, and there's my pen, the acceleration is, drum rolls please, A equals 2.61, that's a 6, 2.61 meters per second squared. And that's how we do that. So what does this problem show us? Well, first of all, once we reach terminal velocity, it's very easy to find the terminal velocity using this equation, or given the terminal velocity, you should be able to figure out the coefficient of viscosity simply by putting mu over here and v sub t over there. But secondly is what happens in the initial stages before the object reaches terminal velocity. Then again, we have to look at all the forces acting on it. We have the weight acting downward, the buoyancy force acting upward, and the displacement, not I shouldn't say displacement force, but the, the uh, drag force pushing upward. So if we're not trying to find the acceleration, it's the force divided by m, and the force is the weight minus the buoyancy force minus the drag force divided by the mass of the object, which can be written as the density times the volume. Then, of course, for the mass, we write density times volume times g of the sphere minus the buoyancy force, which is the weight of the displaced liquid, so rho vg of the liquid, minus Stokes law, which determines the force of the drag, all divided by the mass, which is written as the density times the volume of the sphere. Now you're just putting in the numbers, and there you got the answer. And that's how we do that.